Hey there, everybody, and welcome to a special video today on YouTube. So I'm here to announce that we're launching the class on Web ODM for Beginners. This is a brand new class that I've been digging into pretty hard over more than a month now since I retested Web ODM for the third time over the course of a couple of years. And things really look great now. So uh, after questions from some of our students and some of our patrons about utilizing Web ODM, I went back to recheck it out again. And what I've found is fantastic. If you're new to drone modeling, two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling, and maybe you've been discouraged by the price of some of the applications to allow you to do 2D and 3D modeling, well, I'm here to tell you that Web ODM has a very reasonable price. Um, you can actually pay $0 for it. It's an open source system. And with $0, you're going to get access to a command line setup for the application, so a little complex. What we're going to be doing with this class, once again, it's for beginners, we're going to be talking about the automatic installer for Windows and Mac. So we're not going to be doing anything from command line because we don't want to go too far over everyone's heads. So this application costs $57. It's a one-time fee, and you can put it on both Windows and Mac. They've got installers for each. And like I said, $57 for a Mac installer or $57 for the Windows installer. Now, let's take a look on screen here really quick. So I'm just flipping the screen really quickly here for you. And what we're looking at right now is the Web ODM interface. Not too overwhelming. So. We've got uh, some simple icons here on the left-hand side, a couple of items, and then we've got some of the projects that we've used. Now, if you've already played with Web ODM and you feel comfortable with it, this class is probably not for you. If you're just getting into the uh, drone mapping and modeling and you haven't played around with ODM yet, then we're here to help you actually walk through your initial usage of Web ODM from importing your images to processing models and finally generating outputs from those models as well. So on the interface, we have some of the tests that I've run throughout the class. I'm just gonna pull one of these up. It's labeled as a task. And in that task, we have some information about how we set things up. We can take a look at a two-dimensional map. So there we go. Let's go ahead and hide everything around it so you can actually overlay this on Google or ESRI maps as well. But here is the two-dimensional model that we generated for one of the class examples. In addition to doing the two-dimensional models, of course, we have 3D models as well. So we've got a dense point cloud right here, 3D model of the property in question. And we walk through checking out our 2D models, checking out our 3D models, and how to set them up. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to go ahead and launch this course was because, oh, let me hide Web ODM really quick, the quality of the output. So what we're looking at here on screen, we have outputs from two different items. On the left-hand side, I'm a long-term Metashape user. I absolutely love Metashape for doing my two-dimensional and three-dimensional models. And on the left-hand side, we have an output from one of our flights at a construction site. And on the right-hand side, we've got that same output from Web ODM. So as you can see, the results are incredibly similar. So we're not leaving anything off the table here. It's all right here for us. So if you're just learning about two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling, maybe you've looked around the internet and you said $3,500 for this license, $4,000 for this license, I'm just starting out can I get somewhere to practice? And that's one of the big things behind the power of Web ODM is that people who are completely new to two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling with their drones can dive into this quickly. You can be up and running in the same day and actually creating 2D and 3D models. Now, keep in mind, you would like to have a higher end machine if possible. Web ODM does recommend the more RAM, the better. Same thing with our course. So I'm running this on a Mac Mini M1 and it's running very well. If you'd like to do larger models, of course, you're probably gonna be looking at a higher end mapping and modeling box, either Windows or Mac. But once again, the more RAM, the better, the more drive space, the better for swap space as well, and also for the size of your projects. Now, what is actually included in this course? Let's go ahead and grab ourselves our browser again and let's take a look at the class so 
This is once again, web ODM for beginners, for folks who are already uh, skilled with this and are already very aware of 2D and 3D modeling. I don't think this class is for you. So this is a very beginners oriented class. Now on this, we also have what's this class all about. So after you watch me here, you can check that out as well. And we do list off all of the items that we're going to be doing in this one. Let's take a look really quickly down at the curriculum. So we have the Web ODM class introduction. And so that's a 14 minute video where we talk about everything Web ODM. The second video is actually put up on YouTube. So you might have already seen the second video. And this was when I was doing my first uh, testing again with Web ODM. It was my third time around in the course of over two years checking out Web ODM. And the development of the software plus the difference in systems that I'm using now, everything just clicked together perfectly. So by the way, these are both free previews. So check these out as well before you decide that you want to take this class. I want to make sure the right people are getting into this class. And by the right people, I mean folks who are just starting out, total beginners with this and really want to learn quickly. For those of you who have already played with WebODM, you're probably off and running. Maybe we'll show a unique thing or two that you didn't know about before. But in general, if you're already dug into this, you're probably well on your way. So we actually talk about the WebODM installation for Mac. Then we take a look at the Mac's browser really quick to see the overall interface. We then jump onto WebODM's basic Windows install from their downloader. There is also a Windows native version of WebODM available out there, but I guess there's a little more to getting it installed. So we're staying away from those harder topics where you need command line knowledge and things like that because not everybody has those skill sets or comfortable with the skill sets. So we are specifically looking at those $57 installers and then what we can do with WebODM. So there we go. I also did one additional one because we tested it on an iMac, an Intel iMac, and then we also tested it out on the Mac Mini M1. So working with WebODM, we go through the browser interface, taking a full look at it, seeing what it offers us, changing your model settings. So once you've started doing your own models, we can actually take a look at different settings that are going to yield different results, better orthos, better 3D models, so you get the idea there. Noticeable changes due to settings. So we're going to take a look at the little settings pane because we have a lot of options that we can play with. And this is going to be a lot of experimentation on your own as well. Looking at the 3D model interface, we broke that into two parts because we did run into some problems. I'm going to show you those problems. So in going through this, I'm learning with you as well. So we're going to make mention of things. Keep in mind, open source doesn't mean as heavily supported as branded products out there that come in at higher licensing fees. So when you're dealing with open source, there might be issues here and there in the builds. So client job workflow, workflow with WebODM. Once again, we've got a preview here, and that preview is also seen over on our YouTube channel just to get people interested in WebODM and get them thinking about it. Selecting the 3D model setting that you want to use, Utilizing GCPs with Web ODM, that's a big question for a lot of people. And there's a lot more that goes behind using ground control points. Then we do a second GPC that goes really, really wrong. And we'll actually show you how wrong it goes. Finally, as we're getting into the home stretch with this, the Web ODM outputs. If you're generating two dimensional, three dimensional models, there's a strong possibility that you're sharing this with clients or friends and family, and you need to be able to show it beyond just on your desktop. Well, the Web ODM outputs talks about the exports for point clouds, for our 2D models, uh, for our digital surface models, elevation models, terrain models. And all of these outputs can be used by our clients as well. So these outputs are able to be used on other platforms such as Sketchfab is a great example or QGIS or other tools out there. And we even talked about adding outputs to QGIS as an example. Finally, we've got the class wrap up with more to come because as we get feedback from our students on this class, we're going to be incorporating that feedback where we can into the class and growing it for the long term. So in the end, everybody, I'm pricing the class at $29.99. But since we're just doing the announcement right now, we're going to be doing 40% off of the course. 
So when you go to sign up, uh, you'll see the price of $29.99. You'll see a coupon code and it's 40%, the word percent written in all caps, 40% and that will give you the discount on it. Now, you'll be one of the early adopters. We do have some of the folks on our Patreon channel, and we've got a couple other sets of folks who have been beta testing this for us as well, who are also new to web ODM. So we've gotten their feedback and input, and we've incorporated a lot of that into this course. So there you go. There's my exciting news for the start of a new month. We're very excited about sharing this with you. And hopefully this is going to add some value to your drone skill set and get you started. We know that there's a lot of classes out there on 2D and 3D modeling. They're using PIX, things like PIX4D and Drone Deploy and some of the other higher end tools that might not work in your budget today. WebODM can fit in your budget and you can get started practicing with your 2D and 3D modeling. Is it professional grade? Well, I will say that the ortho models that have come out of this have absolutely wowed me. And looking at those models up against something generated with something on the order of MetaShape, for instance, and seeing the similarities and the similarity in layouts and final rendering, I'm going to say that you can, in fact, provide clients with some of the data from WebODM. I still have a little bit of skepticism on the 3D modeling side because we did run into some problems. And as we continue our own learning experience with WebODM, we'll update based on that as well. But I think this is a great starting point for folks new to this. And I hope you'll check out the class because like I said, we've got several previews in there that are absolutely free to you. So worst case scenario, you take a little bit of your time and you find out the class isn't right for you. That's absolutely okay. Well. I hope you're excited with me and I hope to see some folks signing up and I'm looking forward to some great feedback and some additional work with my own work and web ODM. We'll see you again real soon, folks.